Okay, we are uh, ready for the Pledge of Allegiance. If we can be joined uh, or led rather by Alderman Boren, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jim. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting, Thank President you. Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the last Council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the last Council meeting under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Dated today's date, honorable members of the Common Council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Alderperson Corey Ressler to be considered for appointment to the Finance Committee to fill the vacant position previously held by Dennis Radke and to the Salaries and Grievances Committee to fill the vacant position previously held by James Gisha, terms to expire 4-18-2011. Alderperson Kevin Sampson to be considered for appointment to the Public Protection and Safety Committee and the Marina and Harbor Committee to fill the vacant positions previously held by Dennis Radke, terms to expire 4-18-2011. And Alderperson Kevin Sampson to be also be considered for appointment as the representative from the City of Sheboygan on the EMS Council. Signed by the Mayor. Thank you, Attorney McLean. We have some aldermen buzzing in here. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do these need to lay over or can we approve them tonight? Uh, we are looking to suspend the rules this evening. Thank you. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would ask for suspension of the rules on this, please. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Does anybody need an explanation? No. Vice no, President Rinfleisch doesn't, and nobody else does, I doubt. Very good. Uh, is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? If there is no opposition, the rules are suspended. President Kittleson. Okay. Then I'd ask that the appointments be approved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the appointments under discussion. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to make sure the I's are dotted and T's are crossed, do we need to appoint them or swear them in before we appoint them, or does it not matter? I'm hoping it doesn't matter. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. Is there any further discussion on appointments or procedure? If there is none. Okay. All, or we need a roll call vote on this, please. Yes. Warren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, confirmation of mayor's appointments. Yeah. Attorney McLean. Got the, okay. Uh, everybody submit the following appointment for your consideration. Toby Watson to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Kim Conway, whose term expires 9-11-2011, signed by the mayor. Looking for a motion to approve? Motion, motion to approve the uh, appointment. Second. Motion and a second to approve under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. <clears throat> Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Bracelor? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. <clears throat> Motion carries. We will now have the swearing in of our <clears throat> two new aldermen from District 1. All future Alderman Corey Raisler and from District 2, future Alderman Kevin Sampson. Sue? Alderman, would you like to come up? And if your family member would like to come up, that would be great. Swear that I will support. 
Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of all the persons to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations, gentlemen. Uh, we will now move on to the election of the Board of Waterworks Commissioner, President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that nominations be received from the floor uh, for the Board of Water Commissioners, voting to be done by open ballot. And if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. We have a motion and a second. second. Okay. Do we have any nominations? I nominate Jerry Vandercreek as member of the Board of Water Commissioners. Second. We have a motion and a second for Gerald Vandercreek. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? And for the third time, are there any other nominations? There are none. Jean. I move that nominations be closed and direct that the city clerk cast a unanimous ballot for Jerry Vandercreek as the new member to the Board of Water Commissioners. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of Mr. Vandercreek continuing as the as a Board of Waterworks Commissioner, please state aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Abstain. Uh, we have one abstention from Alderman Boren. The rest all eyes. Congratulations again, Jerry. Thank you for your service. Good campaign you ran there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we will now move on to public forum. Sue? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, first on the list this evening is Kurt Miller. Is Kurt here? Kurt is not here. How about Joel, and I'll try to pronounce this right, is it Johnsrud? Oh, close. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Mm -hmm. Almost. I think I said that. Yeah. Close. <laughs> Joel, can I have your home address, please? 2732 South 15th Street. 2732 South 15th? Correct. Okay. And you will have five minutes, sir. All right. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight, Mayor, older persons. According to the BreastCancerAwareness.com, breast cancer is the leading cause of death in women between the ages of 40 and 55. Eighty-five percent of all diagnoses of cancer have no family history of cancer. Every two minutes, there is a new breast cancer diagnosis. According to CancerFacts.com, November 10, 2006, firefighters are twice as likely to develop cancer than non-firefighters. As many of you know, next month, October, is Cancer Awareness Month. Sheboygan firefighters will be wearing cancer awareness shirts throughout the month of October to raise community awareness. The Sheboygan Fire Department will be selling cancer awareness shirts at the fire station number three, which is located at 1326 North 25th Street. T-shirts will be $15 each and will be available in sizes small through double extra large. The T-shirts look like this on the back. It says fire rescue, cancer awareness, and as you can see the main point on the back is the pink ribbon. And on the front it has a Maltese and again Sheboygan Fire Department with the point being the pink ribbon for cancer awareness. 100% of the money raised will be donated to two charities, the Sheboygan County Cancer Care Fund and the Firefighter Cancer Support Network. The Sheboygan County Cancer Care Fund is dedicated to improving health, well-being, and quality of life for individuals and families of Sheboygan County who have been diagnosed with cancer or disease of the blood. The second charity, Firefighter Cancer Support Network, 
has the objective to provide timely assistance to all fire service members and their families in the event of cancer diagnoses. T-shirts will be available at the beginning of October for the entire community. Thank you for your time tonight and support of cancer awareness. Thanks, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Next. Next would be Mike Lubert. Home address, please. Sure, it's uh, 721 Summer Drive. 721 what? Summer Drive. Summer. Okay. You will have five minutes. Good evening. I am Mike Lubert, a firefighter paramedic for the city of Sheboygan. I am here tonight to talk about the Muscular Dystrophy Association and how the Sheboygan Firefighters Local 483 are associated with it. First off, the Sheboygan Firefighters and myself would like to thank all those who generously donated towards our Fill the Boot campaign in August. That money goes towards a great cause, which I will explain. The Muscular Dystrophy Association was founded in 1950 to help fight, help fight neuromuscular diseases. Currently, there are 43 neuromuscular diseases that the MDA classifies. The most common form is Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Children with Duchenne's currently have a life expectancy of about 25 years. Since 1954, the International Association of Firefighters has become the MDA's largest sponsor. And the Fill the Boot campaign is the single largest fundraising event done by the IFF every year. Every summer, firefighters across the nation go out into the streets and fill boots with donations. 100% of that money goes towards the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Some of you may have seen myself and other members of the Sheboygan Firefighters Local 43 this past August in the streets of Sheboygan doing our part. Just to clarify for anyone who thinks this is a bad thing, we are not in the streets asking for money for firefighters, but we are asking for donations for these children. Again, absolutely 100% of these donations goes towards the MDA. The money that is raised from Fill the Boot is used in a variety of ways. The money is used to pay for medical exams, flu shots, support groups, wheelchairs, and leg braces. The money also goes towards summer camps for children with neuromuscular diseases, which any kid will tell you with a big smile is their favorite time of year. These camps are set up all over the country for children with muscular dystrophy. Myself and other members of the Sheboygan Firefighters have attended a camp and witnessed just how important these camps are to the children. A very common answer given by these children when asked why they enjoy camp so much is, it is the only place I can go and feel normal. This is because for one week a year, these kids have a place to go where everyone is just like them. Even though it is a camp for children with disabilities, it is very much like any other camp. Camp includes such things as arts, crafts, fishing, sports, and campfires, just to scratch the surface of it. To give you an idea of some of the costs associated with this disease, summer camp is about $800 for one kid. Leg braces for one kid on average are around $2,000, and wheelchairs can cost anywhere up to $20,000 for a child with muscular dystrophy. Again, all things the money raised during the Fill the Boot campaign goes for. I wanted to speak on this to, tonight to inform those who may be confused on why we do this. Why firefighters are in the streets every August holding out boots for money and why this means so much to us. Once again, I would like to thank all those who so generously donated to this year's Fill the Boot campaign for muscular dystrophy. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Next. Uh, last on the list would be Jerry Link. Jerry. Jerry, would you like to give me your home address, please? 1607 Alabama Avenue. 1607. Here in Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor and uh, um, the committee for having us and letting us speak tonight. My name's uh, Jerry Link, and this is my wife, Julie. Um, otherwise, I'm known as Julie's husband, okay? And, and uh, we're both pastors. We just planted a church here not too long ago. Uh, River of Life Church. So in, in the church world, I'm known as Pastor Julie's husband. So um, she's the one that's from up here. So I drug her up here on purpose for her sake because I came from Ohio and I'm a transplant. But um, she's the one that got me up here and um, our lives have changed dramatically um, in the last six years. Um, in, in an effort to look for a church building for our new church plant, we were out a year ago and we were looking and um, a landlord said that uh, 
he was out and he just looked at a building that morning and he said, I really think it would, it would do you guys right for a small church to get started anyway. And so he told me about it and it was a little red schoolhouse on Huron Avenue. And so what we decided to do is that day, you see, a mo two months earlier, my dad in Ohio said, have you ever thought about looking at a little schoolhouse? And so I said, you know, I haven't, but I will. And so um, when the landlord came down and said, hey, I just looked at it and, and it would be perfect for you guys, we went that day and we looked at the Little Red Schoolhouse and that was last June, that was a year ago. And uh, since then, we had decided that, that this building was something more than just um, for a church. There's a, a large lot there to it. There's almost three quarters of an acre um, the building is an excellent building. It's, it's old, yes, but there's a lot of potential. And I don't look at the way it is, I look at the potential that it has. And we could outgrow that as a church in, in a short period of time and then what? So what we decided to do was we consulted um, our pastors and they came down and they looked at it and we were talking about a community center. Um, right now, we actually have our services in, in um, the Grand Stay Hotel. The Grand Stay Hotel is that. It's a hotel. We go in, we lease the, the conference room. When we're done, it's still a hotel. It still operates and functions as a hotel. We only lease that space. That's what we plan to do with the Little Red Schoolhouse. It's a community center. We, are start, we have already started. We're not starting. We have started a community center. Last December, we had our first outreach. Um, and, and since then, it's only intensified. It was a small outreach, but we raised some food for the uh, Salvation Army Food Bank, or not, Sal yeah, it was Salvation Army uh, Food Bank. We also were able to um, collect um, toys for 14 families of kids that had no toys. Um, and this all happened like in a two week period. And we also were able to solicit donations where people donated and we had a drawing and we had a, actually had a TV with the small amount of people that we had that, that showed up for this, we had an excellent turnout. And all this was done without the building, that's how it kind of started. And um, so this past June, um, in, in working with the mayor, we, we had the, the contract to purchase which you folks um, approved the last September for a purchase price of 65.5. Everywhere we went for financing, we were almost there three different times the bottom completely fell out. And for me, it's not disheartening. For me, I, I, I like seeing that because when the bottom falls out, I know I don't have to worry about it. And I say, okay, now what's next? I can count that off and not even turn around and worry about it. I say, what's next? Well, here we are with the next what's next because in in june we had a big block party we started with um, the love your city campaign my wife and i are both on the board of sheboygan neighborhood pride where we're um, building the um the neighbor the new neighborhood associations with uh with uh, the president jean here uh, she's on that board as well there's um the gateway community which is now up and running the gateway neighborhood association i should say is up and running we had a block party at, at the, the Little Red Schoolhouse to get the people to start coming. You see, if you lead a horse to water, you gotta show them where to drink. And so they started coming and we started having outreaches with um, the Love Your City campaign, which is, it's, it's not a church thing, it's a people thing. It's about people loving people, it's about people coming out and helping people. We had police officers there. We had, um, Excuse me, we Jerry, had sheriff. Would you like your minute. additional minute? Second. Yes, please. Second. Second. Go ahead. And, and we had 350 volunteers all come together for this gateway neighborhood just to show them. And, and, it, and like I said, it wasn't a church thing. It's an all kind of people thing. And the people were blessed. And we had another outreach in July. More people were blessed. People are coming up and actually donating to us from outside the neighborhood to bless the people in the neighborhood. The halls right now are still filled with things that we can disperse, blankets and toys for kids and games that we can disperse amongst the neighbors there. So um, real quick, in the NARSA report from 2008, page eight, is a reports where the citizens 
report, uh, there's without skills and hope, okay? Um, page nine says the residents speak out. The two biggest concerns on this NARSA report, which is done by the mayor and, and, and uh, the city, um, number one, crimes, drugs, and violence. And number two, people don't get involved in efforts to improve the committee, uh, to improve the community. That's our task. Okay, the Bible states, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Our assignment with the Little Red Schoolhouse Gateway Community Center is to go after their hearts and change the hearts one at a time. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry and Julie. That would be it. Okay, that is all for public forum. Thank you, everybody, for speaking tonight. Um, under mayor's announcements, uh, basically I have a review of what I did very quickly last meeting. We were a little tight on time, if I recall. Um, first of all, uh, Habitat for Humanity. Um, November 6th has been uh, um, designated as a Sheboygan Government Build Day at 2212 South 14th Street. I passed around a list for aldermen uh, who wanted to assist. Unfortunately, the only two pe there's only two people, uh, one of them including me, that have signed up to help out that day out of our maybe, common yeah. council. It's a maybe, yeah. Okay. So well, you'd have maybe, maybe two and a half. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'd like to, uh, I would like to reach out to everybody else in the city, including our uh, fire department, police department, uh, city employees, uh, this is at 2212 South 14th Street. Uh, it is one day. That's all we're looking for is one day to help out for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, no special skills needed, no tools needed. Show up and uh, they will give us uh, tasks to do. If you have skills, it always helps. And I, I'm sure everybody has some type of skill. Uh, 2212 South 14th Street, 8 o'clock a.m. on November 6th. I ask that uh, anybody in the city, if you can call my office <laughs> I do have some people available to let me know. I don't want to uh, show up with myself and one other person there. Or they may keep us for a few weeks before they let us go to <laughs> produce some work. So everybody keep that in mind. Um, Saturday, September 25th, that would be this Saturday, 9 a.m. to noon, there is the Adopt a Beach Cleanup event. Uh, many coastal, Sheboygan coastal areas to choose from, including Northeast Park, Valrath Park, North North Point Park, Deland Park, the Marina, uh, Blue Harbor, King Park, and Lakeview Park. That's all you have to do is show up. Uh, I would advise that you have gloves if you own any. Uh, to register this year, go to the website, www.greatlakes.org, um, and you can sign up uh, to help out with that. That's basically a three-hour event, and I know that they have a... Uh, have a prize for the uh, oddest item found. So it's kind of like a treasure hunt for garbage. So that's that. That is on uh, this Saturday, September 25th, 9 a.m. to noon. Um, rebuilding Together, another fine group. Uh, Alderman uh, Hammond is, uh, is very involved in this group, and I had the privilege of helping out on one of their days that they were remodeling houses last year. Uh, are taking home renovation applications uh, until Friday, December Third, a uh, local chapter of national organization is dedicated to revitalizing communities by assuring that homeowners have a warm, safe, and dry environment in which to live. Uh, on Saturday, April, April 30th, 2011, that will be the, uh, the day that uh, the homes will be worked on, um, Saturday, April 30th, 2011. I know that's a ways out, but uh, if you can put it on your calendars, um, we'd be looking for people to help out with this. Uh, but right now they are taking applications uh, to receive an application. Uh, you can pick one up at the local 70, 731 Carpenters Union at 1210 North A Street. That's 1210 North A Street or www.rt-sheboygan.org. So if you can, uh, if anybody who's interested who has a home that you are looking to uh, have rebuilding together, uh, assist you in remodeling that home. I know it's a lot of uh, windows, weatherproofing, uh, you name it, it's done. Doorways, uh, um, inside work, outside work, it's, it's, they do it all. So again, that uh, uh, applications are at uh, 1210 North A Street or www.rtsheboygan.org. Last but not least, Oktoberfest. L and L's. Uh, Oktoberfest, this is a, uh, not a city-sponsored event, but the city does assist in that. 
Uh, that will be October 1st and 2nd. Now, I always thought that uh, it's called Oktoberfest, but it's always in September. But this is October 1st and 2nd, so I guess it's truly Oktoberfest. Um, this will be at Allen L's. Um, uh, I think it's been out there that uh, I am going to be tapping the keg. That is correct. I will be tapping the keg. However, I assure you I will not be pouring the beer. Somebody else will be doing that this year. Tapping the keg to me involves pounding that, uh, that tapper into the keg. And I think I'm doing another one of those down at, uh, on A Street next weekend. Um, this is Friday night, 4 to 10 p.m. and Saturday, 11.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. They will have uh, uh, indoor and outdoor heated tents. Uh, so everybody, please come down and support the event October Fest, October 1st and 2nd in the Allen Al's neighborhood. And that's all I have for announcements this evening. Consent agenda, President <coughs> Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, all ordinances and resolutions be passed, and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Oh, second. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion in the late second. <laughs> okay, uh, on the consent agenda, a couple notes here. Um, we are going to take the consent agenda in a few different sections. Uh, uh, Twelve dash four is going to be referred to Public Works. If everybody can make a note, okay. um, twelve dash twenty will be referred to Building Use, and twelve dash ten, um, Alderman Hammond is going to make a motion on twelve ten. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm asking for a division of the question, specifically pulling out um, RO 198-10-11, which was a request from the uh, county to use Blue Harbor for two meetings. Um, that was voted on by finance. Um, however, in talking with the county executive, um, or county administrator, excuse me, um, they have already booked those and published the agendas. Um, and so I'm asking that we um, vote um, on that to allow them to use those facilities for those two days. Okay, so we have a motion for division of the question. Do we have a second on that one? Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Uh, all in favor of, uh, of dividing that question state aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we have that one divided. So first of all, we are going to take uh, the consent agenda itself, which will be 12-1 through 12-3. 12.5 through 12.9 and 12.11 through 12.19. Maybe do a... Yes. Oh, I just thought you looked, uh, looked at me like I was doing something wrong there, Sue. I thought I had it under control. Um, You're good. We have a... A, We're not good. a motion and a second. We've already done that. Do we need to do it again? Yeah, we had, no, we had a motion and a second. Right. Yeah, where I was going to take it to a vote and then we'll come back to 12.10. Yeah. We've already had a motion to do the consent. Right. Now we're just taking We're going to do a roll call on 12 1 through 12 3, 12 5 through 12 9, and 12 11 through 12 19. Is there any discussion on that? Alderperson Kath? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Um, I'd like to call 12 18 and take a separate vote on that. 12 18 for a separate vote. Okay, so we'll do 12 11 through 12 17 and 12 19. <laughs> Twelve eleven through twelve seventeen and twelve nineteen. Okay. On the rest of them, may we have roll call, please. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bercy. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bauk. Aye. 15 eyes. <coughs> Motion carries. Uh, 12 10 on division of the question. Um, we basically have, uh, do we have to vote on both parts of that then? Or? Separately, yep. Okay, on 12 10, uh, first we uh, will look for a Motion and a second okay. to file all documents with the exception of the document noted oh. by Alderman Hammond. I make that motion. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote on all documents with the exception of RO number. 198-10-11. 198-10-11. Who seconded it? I'm sorry. Eric? Eric did. Believe it or not. Roll call, please. 
We have to roll call on those, correct? We're just oh. filing one communication. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That one is filed. Mm -hmm. um, on the RO number? 198-10-11. We have a motion and a second to take that for a separate vote already. Um, that is to authorize uh, the county to use a couple days at the Blue Harbor. Um, they already have their agendas out. So, you know, in, in the spirit of cooperation with the county, we'd like to have this approved for them this evening. Under discussion? President Kittleson? No. no. Vice President Rinflesh? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think we need a separate motion to actually uh, accept and place on file the RO and pass the resolution, which is not actually included in here because we have just a place on file. The resolution is not attached, but was given to the older persons at our last council meeting. Yep. Uh, that, all, that resolution has not changed. So people are wondering where the resolution is. You have received it in the packet two weeks ago. Which basically. one are you looking at? 198-10-11. Uh, because it's the resolution actually granting permission for the uh, county to use the right. harbor. The, the, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rainflesh. You're correct. If the resolution itself was, uh, was brought to the Finance Committee. Uh, Finance Committee uh, voted that uh, it would probably be better if we allowed the county to use a smaller venue. Um, however, we didn't realize they already had their, their uh, agenda posted. Um, and right now at this point, uh, this is coming up this week for them. We would rather just have it uh, passed to allow them to use the Blue Harbor for the spirit of, of, okay. of future cooperation between the city and the county. So. To make that, mo do we, that motion has been made and seconded already, I believe. There's some questions, though. Can you tell by the look on my face yes. that I yes. <laughs> <laughs> What is the resolution? Because we don't have it in this packet. Right. Did it just get talked about in finance? No, there was a document, if I'm stand correct, um, yep. document that was referred uh, with a attached resolution granting permission for um, the city to give two of its Blue Harbor for days, uh, which we received two weeks ago. Uh, it's not attached because the recommendation was to place on file. But we did receive the resolution. So we've already passed place. that resolution, is what you've said? We, we have not. We it came to council and ago. it was referred to committee. It was referred right. to committee. And we filed it in finance. <clears throat> and I'm asking it to be pulled and voted on by the council. It, it came back to council with a recommendation from finance to file. Correct. But we did receive the resolution and council, which got referred to finance. Let's file it. A letter. We received a letter from Adam requesting the dates. Yes, and, and that's that attached to the RO. Okay. So I we don't didn't actually have a resolution. We just had the RO. No, we just had the RO. No. We just. Had yeah, I, I, if I could, uh, Your Honor, Please. I think traditionally they've come in as as a letter request, and the letter request has been forwarded. I don't know that right. there's been a separate re resolution oh. along with right. those, and it's been a matter of just the council granting the request without a formal resolution. All right, then I'll change my motion to um, accept and file the RO, uh, to move to accept and file the RO and grant the, um, the request to give the two city days to the county. Second. That clarifies everything? It's good. Sue's good? All right, thank you. If it's good for you, Eric, it's good for everybody. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now we will go to, uh, we have a, a request for a separate uh, roll call vote on 1218. RC by PPNS recommending authorizing the purchasing agent to publicly offer for sale a vacant parcel of the property located directly south of fire station number two on the corner of South 18th and Mead Avenue. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I was unable to attend public protection and safety, excuse me, and I read this document and I was wondering if the, the fire chief could uh, uh, explain to the council the reason for selling this property and uh, then I have a question for him. Very good, Chief. That piece of oh, property. Excuse uh, me, just a moment. We need a motion on the floor to discuss this because it's on the. I'd make that motion to allow, allow the chief to speak on this. Second. Bill. Second. He's, still He's a here. department, yeah. It, it would be a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the resolution and then open it up for discussion. Make that motion to accept and adopt the resolution. Or 
and pass the yep I got and it. pass and, <laughs> and open up the floor to allow the chief to speak. Second. Okay. Thank you. Go for it. That piece of property has been uh, part of the fire department property I think since the mid 70s or so that station was built I think in 1978. Um, it's really of no use to the fire department. We've been maintaining it all this time as far as cutting the grass, raking the leaves, um, blowing the snow all the way around that corner. Um, there's really, as I said, no need for the fire department to hold on to this piece of property and I believe it could go on to the tax rolls as a benefit to the city. Alderman Board. Thank you, Mayor. I guess my question is, Chief, with the, uh, with the referendum coming up and, and then depending on how the referendum shakes out. Uh, and then based on that referendum, there might be a future reorganization of the fire department. Uh, do you think it might be better until wait until after November to put this on the market based on any reorganization you have to make or any changes that you have to make to station two, if it's gonna stay open, it's not gonna stay open, whatever the case may be, it might be a good idea maybe to hold onto that property at least for a few months yet. I just want your opinion on that. Um, I don't see any need for that piece of property next to that station. Um, I don't see any expansion of the fire department in the near future. And if that station did expand, it would be uh, most likely to the north into the parking lot area. Um, offering it for sale, I think, is just the start of this. It still would have to come before the council. Uh, to approve that sale, so I think um, the time period probably would fit. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. We have lights lighting up here. Alderman Bowers, did you have a question? Yes, thank you. Uh, Chief, what, what is the zoning there? Maybe you don't know, but does anybody know what the zoning is there? Yeah. That is a uh, planning and development question. Oh, okay. Steve? Urban residential. Do you have any idea what uh, we're going to ask for a price? It's right out of there. Uh, the number I think that we've thrown around is somewhere between twenty-five and thirty-five thousand. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions, Alderperson Kath? Thank you, Mayor Ryan. It just makes no sense to me to uh, sell off land next to prime real estate, not just for possibly the expansion of Station Two, <coughs> but in the event that we sell Station Two having that extra land to go with that station is probably of more value than to sell it separate now in this economy. That's just my opinion. Thank you, Alderperson Kath. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess we did discuss this in public protection and safety, and our city engineer explained to us as well that this was just preliminary work that he would be doing on this, and that uh, <coughs> it, you know to go any further with anything, it would definitely have to come before council. So it's all just in the preliminary stages, I believe. And, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, President Kittleson. Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Mayor. Um, I I'm going to take the advice of uh, Alderperson Koth, who's a professional real estate agent. It makes sense to me that this extra piece of property would be worth more, um, depending on how the, uh, the vote shakes out. We may be building a new fire department somewhere uh, to centralize it and take us down to fewer stations and make uh, it more efficient, which is what the chief has said could be a future plan, to relocate and put his fire department st fire stations in a better locations. So I think it's foolish. I don't think we all wish we had $35,000 and we all like an extra piece of property to go on the tax roll. Given the uncertainty that's going into the fire department calculus right now, I think it would be foolish for us to sell this piece of property now. If it's a good idea now, it's a good idea six months from now. So I'm going to vote no. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bauck. Alderman Bourne, one more time. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I was going to make a motion to hold this until January 1st of 2011. Second. Who seconded it? I'm sorry. Who'd like the second? Raise your hand, please. Alderman Versi did. Versi. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion and a second on the floor to hold this document until January 1st of 11. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, to the fire chief, um, if expansion were to take place, you had commented already that you have room to the north the parking lot is, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and that expansion would be to probably build on to what is already in existence 
versus tearing something down and rebuilding. Right. Uh, and to expand to the south, you would actually have to tear down everything there and rebuild, which would be more expensive than simply adding on to the north. So, uh, Your Honor, my, the, the way I hear it is, is I think it's smoke and mirrors. Uh, I think we heard a lot of arguments. Uh, if, if the police department offered excess land, there'd be no problem. We've already passed this by now, moving on to other business. Because it's the fire department now, now we have some issues. Uh, and uh, we've already heard. if. Whatever happens, if we need to expand 18th Street, we have room to the north. We can expand. We can expand that's most cost effective by adding on to the building uh, to the north versus going to the south. That lot to the south is the same size as all the other residential lots in that neighborhood. It can be built on with that very, very easily. It's wooded, which is no other lot is. So I think we'll actually get more money than the twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars built for it. Um, we've also heard many people talk about waiting um, on that. We, you know, other issues have come through, and whenever we're looking for saving the taxpayers money. We've jumped on that horse and we've said we need to do that. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna jump on this horse too. So I'm gonna vote no on the hold. I'm gonna hopefully it comes back and I'll vote yes on the sale of the property. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vice President Rinfleisch. Alderman Buck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to be clear in case uh, Vice President uh, thought I was indicating anything like that, uh, I heard what the chief said and it has nothing to do with expanding. It has to do with the fact that a while ago the fire chief said that long-term planning wise, he could probably be much more efficient in this city if we demolished a couple of the existing houses and built a brand new fire central fire station in a completely different location somewhere in the city. And in that case, I would think we would raise the existing fire station and sell that land off. So I'm voting no now. It has nothing to do with some sort of vendetta against the fire department, which I, I'm sure the good vice president was indicating that anybody on this co uh, council was doing that because it was the fire department. I'm sure that was a misstatement on his part. I am voting this way because of my fiduciary obligation to do what's right in the long term for the city. And I believe that that, pe that parcel of property, based on the input of a professional real estate agent, says that it's worth more sold together once you raise the building than with a house nearby. So I will vote no against this or vote yes on the whole, depending on what we vote on next, uh, out of absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it has to do with the fire department and everything to do with the fact that a colleague of ours uh, who knows real estate has uh, given us some coaching on that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bob. Okay, I have no more lights here. Um, thank you, Chief. If we have uh, no further discussion, we have a motion on the floor. Motion to hold the document until January 1, okay, 2011. Okay, we, we do, we'll do a roll call vote first on to hold the document. A yes vote will hold the document until 2011. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? No. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? No. Samson? No. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Bowers? Aye. And Decker? No. Seven eyes, eight no's. So the document is not held. Correct. Motion fails. Okay, now we have a motion to pass the RC. Accept and adopt. Yeah, motion to accept and adopt the RC. And pass the resolution. And pass the resolution. Yes. Is there any discussion on that? If there is not, roll call, please. Hannah? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. That would be I. <laughs> Heidemann? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? No. Boren? No. Bauk? No. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond? No. Seven ayes, eight noes. Motion fails. <clears throat> Vice President Renflesh. Uh, move to uh, file the report of committee. Second. We have a motion and a second to file the RC. Under discussion? <coughs> if there is none, roll call please. Okay. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 
Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me, Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Unanimous decision. <laughs> Motion, to the document is filed, and I believe that is yeah. all for the, con oh, that is all for the consent agenda. <laughs> all right, moving on. History. Communications and petitions, 1221 and 1222 to be referred. Reports of officers to 1223 and 1224 to be referred. Resolutions introduce three, 1225 through 1227 to be referred. Report of committee four. 1228, by salary and grievances, recommending lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire two camera operas for operators for WSCS-TV in passing the attached resolution. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. <coughs> Under discussion. Um, and put the resolution upon its passage. Put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Bauk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just asked the chairman, uh, I wasn't able to attend his last uh, meeting, if he could explain the background why we need two more uh, camera operators. I appreciate it. Alderman Hannah. I was, I was unable to attend also, so I will defer to all the person Kittleson. President thank Kittleson. You, thank you, Mayor. Yes, uh, we discussed this because the uh, they are needing some help at TV8. The, the gentlemen that they have working there right now are uh, getting, uh, getting on. They're mature. Getting, they're mature <laughs> gentlemen. And I think they'd like to retire as well a little bit. So we're looking at bringing some new people in to help them out um, at a very uh, nominal cost. I believe it was ten seventy-five an hour, no benefits, part-time. and. Uh, uh, bringing them on to, to broadcast the high school uh, sporting events. That is what they're needing. If, if you recall, on the 4th of July parade, we celebrated Fritz's 90th, 90th birthday, birthday as he climbed right. down from the tower. Right. So I think it's time. They could use some help. Thank you. Answer your question, Alderman Bauer? Yes, sir. Thank you. Alderman Bowers, did you have a question? Yes, thank you. I think uh, Alderman Kittleson answered that, but I didn't hear. Did you say $10,000? <laughs> no, I, 10, oh, 10, 10 75 an hour. Oh, and 10 75 an hour. An so hour is what we'll be paying so them. So these are part-time. These are part-time okay, people. No benefits. For no anything. benefits. Okay, correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you, Alderman Bowers. Are there any further questions? If there are none, roll call, please. Okay. Kai. Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Florin? Aye. Falk? <coughs> Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 6, 12-29 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator's license number 8693 based upon his failure to include all relevant convictions on his taxicab operator's license application and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Is Garrett L. Schultz here? He's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Uh, it is uh, the uh, recommendation of the committee uh, based on what you had read uh, for this uh, applicant li uh, license to be denied based on the non-cooperation and failure to include all relevant convictions. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 
15 ayes. Motion carries 12 30 by law. It's reports of committee 7 12 30 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 8701 based upon public safety concerns related to her record of criminal arrests and her failure to cooperate with the committee, culminating with her oral withdrawal of her application. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Is La Fonsetip here? She's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Uh, it was a recommendation uh, from the committee to deny, based on, again, what you've read, uh, a lengthy record of criminal arrests and a failure to cooperate with the committee. Uh, and eventually she did uh, notify me verbally that she would like to withdraw her uh, application uh, to clear the books that we do need to deny the license at this time. Good. Is there any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 12 31 by law and licensing, recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 8740 based upon public safety concerns and his failure to fully reveal his record on his taxi cab driver's license application. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Thank you. Is Willie Bird here? He's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Uh, it was a unanimous decision from the committee to deny uh, based on the public safety concerns. Uh, again, a lengthy uh, <coughs> uh, list of violations, uh, specifically to um, some traffic violations, a taxi cab application. Um, so we uh, recommend that we deny the license. Is there any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 12 33 by law and licensing, recommending granting beverage operators license number 7982 for Amber Leonard. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask, ask the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the uh, license be granted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and grant the license under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this is the applicant that uh, came two weeks ago uh, and asked for a third chance. Um, uh, our recommendation was to deny two weeks ago. Uh, our recommendation is to uh, grant the license at this point in time uh, based on our cooperation uh, and uh, fully discussing uh, the concerns the committee had. Very good. Is there any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 12 34 by finance recommending the format for the ambulance information session sessions. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, make a motion that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Under discussion, President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, we did meet and discuss this issue here in a joint meeting, uh, finance and uh, public protection and safety. Um, and. Uh, I think it's written up very well, uh, what we have talked about and what we decided. I, I still have to say I have a concern about A, the panel um, that we are putting together uh, here for these listening sessions. Um, I guess I do have a real concern that um, we don't turn this into a, a debate um, and uh, we can't we, I just uh, don't want the city to, uh, to be put in that position. So. That being said, um, yeah, as I said, I just don't want this to turn into a public debate or a fight of any sort. It needs to be an information listening session. Thank you. Thank you, President Kittleson. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, to a large degree, I echo uh, the sentiments of the, uh, President Kittleson um, that um, you know, hopefully that these, these information sessions can be uh, 
uh, truly that information, you know, science of information can be presented and they're, they're kept, um, the discourse is kept uh, appropriate so then it's not, it doesn't turn out into an all-out battle and a fight. Um, we, the one place we do disagree is, is on the panel. Um, I, I thought, felt was strongly that we did have some uh, dissenting opinion on that panel as well. Uh, and mainly for the reason that uh, the fire chief and uh, especially the financial information that comes from James Modio, our finance director, uh, will be out there and uh, people will be able to ask questions and debate that. Uh, but we've seen numbers out there from uh, the Greatest Warring Committee uh, and uh, um, uh, one, one um, particular uh, figure, and I believe her name is the uh, CPA, uh, with some sets of numbers out there. And without having a chance of actually putting them up there, their numbers can't be questioned as well. Uh, they can just be taken as truth. And I think it's important that, that those people are also can defend or need to defend their numbers as well that may be different with the fire department's numbers and our finance director's numbers that it will be under attack as well. So that's the reason why I, I felt strongly that it was important to have some, some other representation up there as well. Hopefully it doesn't become simply just a, an all-out battle. They're not running for any campaign. It's not, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, two uh, candidates for office that are, are trying to do it, but I thought it was important that we at least had both sides up there, that it, they would have to defend their sides. Thank you, Vice President Rindfleisch. Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to thank in advance Sue and Mike. Uh, you two, uh, on our committee, we had vigorous debate over who should moderate these panels, and I think it's a great testament to the respect that the Council holds the both of you in, that your names bubble to the top as being neutral, yet, uh, yet, powerful and resourceful moderators uh, who will prevent, I think, the kind of uh, discord that the, that the President and Vice President have, uh, have voiced concern over. So I just want to thank you on behalf of the Council for stepping up to the plate on that. And uh, secondly, I would uh, just challenge the Vice President's comment that somehow the numbers coming from the Greater Sheboygan Committee won't be truth with a capital T, yet the numbers coming out of the Sheboygan Fire Department and, and uh, Finance Office out of context would be truth with a capital T. I think what Sue and Mike are going to help us accomplish is a fair explanation. I think Chairman uh, Hammond put it this way. It'll be a back and forth of yes, buts. Yes, uh, city. That number is interesting, but I think you neglect to mention the fact that it needs to be distributed, uh, weighted with this. Or, you know, so, I, so I think the vision, at least uh, Chairman Hammond's vision, was that the two moderators would serve as that voice that allow it not to become a debate, but that allow both, uh, both sides to be heard. And I encourage you to, to do that. And again, thank you for your service. Thank you, Alderman Balk. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I was going to ask, uh, because we talked about this at the joint meeting on, on item F, uh, seek, this, seek the opinion of the city attorney regarding the sixth, the, the sixth session, because uh, originally it said that there were going to be five listening sessions. Is there a, a problem with having a sixth session if it wasn't in the original, uh, uh, the original document? I think the original said five. Uh, you're correct, uh, Alderman Bourne. The original document did say that the council shall hold five public information sessions before the referendum. Uh, frankly, uh, if they hold more than that, I can't believe that anybody's going to have a problem with that. I don't see anything uh, to prohibit having an additional one if that's what the council chooses to do. And uh, if you feel that it's helpful to provide that additional meeting. I think that's perfectly fine. Thank you for your opinion. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Did I hear you right, uh, Alderman uh, Reinfleisch, when you said that the, the figures presented by the opposition probably will not be true, or, or did I miscrew that? I could uh, barely hear you. Would you please answer that, please? Alderman Reinfleisch, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, no, it's not simply saying that the document information would not be true. Uh, a CPA is, um, you know, takes their, their position very seriously, as does our finance director uh, and numbers. Uh, but as Alderman Balk said, there's different ways of looking at that, uh, and two different ways. And as he said, there's obviously yes, but issues uh, that people need to look at. So no, it's not that people would that bring in and bring other numbers. But it's important that they're uh, defensible. Um, that, it, that it's you know, on both sides, quite frankly, uh, that you know, if, if someone questions the fire department's numbers or the finance contract numbers, they can ask that position. This is giving the forum for then the citizens to ask the same kinds of questions to the Greater Sheboygan Committee and uh, to the Fayette or the CPA. 
no greater, no less, uh, both opportunity, equal opportunity given to both uh, is really the intent of that. So no, it's not that I think any numbers are going to be falsified. It's that uh, under, as Alderman Bauck said, the yes but situation, both sides have a seat at that table to do so. Uh, I think it's, it's fair for, for both sides. Uh, if not, where would Greater Sheboygan Committee go? Uh, letters to the editor, perhaps. Try to get on the radio, perhaps. I mean, we're giving them a seat at the table right next to the uh, uh, finance director and the uh, uh, fire department for that opportunity. I think it's a good one. Did that answer your question, Alderman Bowers? To a certain extent. Um, so in other words, you, you say it's okay for the, the figures to be presented and let the public make their, whatever their results would be, right? Mm -hmm. Let the public decide which figures to accept. May I respond, Your Honor? Please do. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, the question would be, you know, that's what the whole information session is about. People can ask the questions to get the information that they need. And they can ask questions from both parties to get the information they need. Um, it's not, there's there no ultimate on the board. Uh, no one has made, it to, made a previous vote on that is on the board. It's simply a board that, that the citizens can ask the questions and get the information they need to make a vote. That's it. But we're providing both parties or both sides of the issue with a seat at that very public forum, which, which we hope will be televised so that the public, even those that can't be attended to question, will be able to hear the response from both parties. Did that answer your question, Alderman I Bowers? assume that's a yes, right? <laughs> for my simple question, I'm, yes. I, Alderman Bowers, are, are, what are we? I believe we said yes in that response several times, my comments. Well, I'm yes. having trouble hearing, are, are, so. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Okay, Alderperson Kath, please. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Um, at the joint committee, there was discussion of Mayor <coughs> Rayner's CPA being on this committee. Is she part of the Greater Sheboygan Committee, or is she not, or no longer part of the designee? If I can answer that question, um, I did some research myself on the Greater Sheboygan Committee and the members. Uh, from what I found out today, I believe there's six members, six present members of the Greater Sheboygan Committee. She is not listed as a member of the Greater Sheboygan Committee. Um, of the six members of the Greater Sheboygan Committee, I found two of them to be city residents, if that answers your question, unless somebody knows otherwise. Alderman Hammond? Uh, no, I was just going to respond to that. So that's, that's what I found out about the Greater Sheboygan Committee. It's six people. <laughs> and and Faye Rayner is not one of those people. Excuse me. But Alderperson Kath? At the Joint Committee, wasn't she going to be part of mm -hmm. the, but on this uh, document, she's not. It says or designee, doesn't it? Or their designee. Or their designee. Or their designee. Exactly. I could respond. Alderman to Hammond, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the reason we put designees is there are certain meetings, because there's six different information sessions that either herself or representative of the Greater Sheboygan Committee would not be able to make. And in, in the event that somebody from the city wouldn't be able to make it, whether it's the finance department, somebody could fill in in those positions. So we wanted to keep it flexible. That's why you have the designees. I believe, Faye, there was one meeting she wasn't going to be able to make, and so they would have a designee from Greater Sheboygan Committee. But her name is not on this document. Oh. She'd be a designee of the, yeah, she'd be a designee of the Greater Sheboygan Committee. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Uh, Alderman Hanna? Thank you. This goes quite a ways back to Alderman Bourne's question about uh, whether it's a problem having six meetings. I was the one that said we should have a minimum of five. And that was my intention all along. That I didn't want to have less than that. Uh, so my intention never was to have to uh, stop it at five. You know, six is just fine. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Uh, next, we have Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, it was very clear at the meeting that. Two individuals from the Greater Sheboygan Committee or designees, so that could be anybody that they chose. And we assumed they meant probably Miss Uraner. But we didn't specifically mention her because designees would cover anybody that that side would like to put forth. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Alderman Bowers? Yes, I take exception when you said that Faye Rayner is not a um, resident of the city. She's a taxpayer of the city and she owns a business here. So therefore, I want it known that she has a vested interest in this particular situation. Um, Alderman Bowers, not to correct you, but I did not mention Ms. Uraner as not being a resident of the city. I said the Greater Sheboygan Committee, of which she is not a member of. 
just so it's known. But she is also not a resident of the city, but. But she is a taxpayer. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that we call the question. <coughs> Motion and second to call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The question is called. Okay, 1234 by finance recommending the format for the ambulance information sessions. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Raisler? Aye. 14 ayes, one no. Motion carries. 12, hmm. okay, 12-32 12 to be referred. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was earlier, very good. Okay, reports of committees eight, 12-35 by finance, making no recommendation on executing a lease agreement for the Little Red Schoolhouse at 1116 Huron Avenue. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I make a motion that the reporter committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. Motion and a second under discussion. I heard a hissing in the background. <laughs> Starting my second. Um, I believe there was no recommendation because there was one. Yeah, I can explain that. Please. Um, we had uh, three people present. Um, one was absent. We didn't have a fourth uh, from the leaving of Mr. Gisha. Um, and one had to abstain, so there were only two that could vote on the issue. So that's why there was no recommendation. On, uh, Very good. Okay, we have a motion and a second uh, to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion. If there is none, roll call please. Warren. Abstain. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Ann Versi? Aye. <laughs> 14 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 12 36 by finance, recommending approving the proposed 2011 calendar year budget for tourism promotion and development services to be provided by the Chamber of Commerce. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I make a motion that the reporter committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call please. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 12-37 by <coughs> finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget, establishing appropriation to fund contractual services for the dredging of the Sheboygan River. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that the reporter committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call please. Powers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10. 12-38 through 12-40 lie over. 1241 through 1245 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, resolution number 88-10-11 by Alderman Hammond, approving an amendment to the project planned and boundaries of TID 6, City of Sheboygan. We would like a motion to file this. Alderman Hammond. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to file. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, I can explain this. Uh, we were going to uh, uh, amend the boundaries of TIF 6, but when the uh, uh, reports came in from the state regarding um, uh, basically uh, 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 appraisals of uh, um, commercial properties, um, we no longer have to. So there's, there's no, no reason at this point to amend uh, TID 6. 
So we have a motion and a second to file. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. 1246, an RC by salary and grievances amending the municipal code so as to remove the city engineering and tourism functions from the Department of Planning and Development and reestablish the city engineering division in the Department of Public Works. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. If there is none, roll call please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Cuff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Bowers? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 12-47, an RC by salary and grievances providing for the appointment of the city engineer by the director of public works, Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the charter ordinance be put upon its pass. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. And Decker. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 1248 in RC by salary and grievances amending the municipal code so as to reestablish the city engineering functions back into the Department of Public Works. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um, <clears throat> move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Boren? Aye. Boak? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean. 12-49 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. That will be referred to law and licensing. 1250 is an RO by the purchasing agent submitting a report relative to the city entering into agreement with Timberline Landscapes, Inc. of Green Bay for the furnishing and planting of trees throughout the city in accordance with Request for bids 1578-10 received on September 17, 2010. Will be referred to Public Works. 1251 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract with Timberline Landscapes, Inc. of Green Bay for the provision and planning of 207 street trees throughout low to moderate income neighborhoods within the city, commencing in the fall of 2010 and completing in the spring of 2011. That will be referred to Public Works. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.